we're using microfluidically enabled high throughput single cell RNA sequencing to understand how population responses are mounted and coordinated. So we took some immune cells that we had stimulated with different pathogens and what we really asked is how, do, how is a dynamic population response structured in the cells that comprise it? And so the paper really goes into looking at changes in expression over time and the ways in which the population actually controls those changes. So we did a pilot about a year ago on 18 cells and what we were able to show is that um, actually we could use single cell RNA sequencing to get an idea of what the difference was between cells and that we could actually uncover things from it like cell circuits and cell states. But at the time we'd been limited in our throughput and we really couldn't look at a lot of the questions that we were interested in. And we uh, were lucky enough to meet up with uh, Fluidime through the newly founded Single Cell Genomics Initiative. And they developed a microfluidic approach that would help us with preparing single cells for sequencing. And so the impetus was really that we knew we wanted to do this, but the technology emerged and it was a melding of the minds. So really what the paper is about is about showing that a lot of the behaviors that emerge in a multicellular population are the result of communication between cells. And so I think what's interesting about it is that certain population behaviors that, that we think are really important are actually emerging from the decisions of a remote population of cells. Because the early responders are actually initiating an antiviral response in our cells and turning off inflammation and are a limited population of cells, what we've discovered that's interesting is that this percentage of cells that can actually generate this response can be very important. So if you don't have the right number of these cells, you actually won't be able to turn off inflammation, which could lead to disease. And if you have too many, you might not have sufficient inflammation. So what, what the real takeaway to me is, is that we need to start to think about balance and how the interaction between cells actually drives things at a systems level. And that sometimes when we have disease phenotypes, it, it might not be because of a circuit within a cell. It could be because a circuit between cells, a faulty communication line. What the paper really does, I think, beautifully, and this is the work of a computational postdoc, uh, Rahul Satija, who will be starting his lab soon, is it deals with the intricacies of single cell RNA sequencing data and the imperfections in it. And what we've really done is we've developed a computational pipeline, in addition to an experimental pipeline, for going through profiling a lot of single cells and then making sense of this extremely complicated data set. Um, and so while I hope the biological findings will be important, I hope that at the very least the methods that we've developed in order to do this will be generally applicable. I think that the next steps in this line of research are to move beyond sort of these simple model systems that we've worked in where we've been looking at. You know, we've, for these initial studies, we worked with bone marrow-derived dendritic cells, which are a great model because they're post-mitotic, they have good stimuli like bacterial components, and they make these uh, these very stereotypical responses. We have population data. We have lots of things to compare it to. But that's a model. Really where you'd want to use these single cell profiling approaches that we have is to dissect heterogeneity that exists in real samples. Things where there's going to be incredible complexity where we want to understand who are the cells that are implicated and what are they doing. This was a large collaborative project that involved uh, not only my home group, which is Hong Kong Park's lab over at Harvard, um, but also a V for Gebs group and the Kleinman Cell Observatory and uh, Flu and I'm over in uh, South San Francisco. And really, this paper wouldn't have been possible without the computational expertise of Rahul Satija, uh, who's a postdoc in Aviv's group, um, Joe Shuka, who's a scientist out at Fluidime, who did a lot of the early phase stuff, and uh, mentorship by Hong Kun, Aviv, and Andy May, who's out at Fluidime as well.